Sterling, who played well for us as a freshman. She made I think, come along. Dennis Warren can play the end position. Kier can always go back out and play the end position. Three guys inside that I feel like we can win with is Kier, Javon Kenlaw, and Kobe Smith. We need more guys up front inside to be able to help us. JJ's going to help us. He could play end. He can also play tackle as well. Uh, you know, if he's playing inside, he's going to be, you know, a movement guy because he's very slippery on blocks and he's got very good instincts on blocks. Um, but we need some more guys to step up up front for us. At the buck position, obviously, Dennis Warren can play there. And then when we're not in regular, Bryson will play there. Danny Fennell continues to make strides and Brad Johnson. So, you know, there, this is probably as deep as we've been since we've been uh, at South Carolina with the guys up front. We've got to continue to uh, be deeper. I'm, I'm never going to be satisfied with the numbers. The most exerting thing you do is rush your passer defensively. And uh, you got to have as many as you can, especially early in the year. Coming off their first spring, what is sort of the challenge to the uh, to the early enrollees with kind of what they've got to do in the next few months? Well, I think you know we'll, we'll start the exit uh, uh, meetings uh, next uh, week with our with our team and just talking in terms with them. With I meet mean, with everybody on the team and go through uh, what I, we discussed as a staff from a coordinator standpoint, from a position coach standpoint, and from my standpoint, what they all need to do to improve, not just the mid-year guys. But the mid-year guys are going to be very pleased when we get into fall camp why they came here now. Because now they understand a little bit more about strain, a little bit more about the installation, the scheme, the things we're trying to do. So it's going to be very beneficial for them in August. But we'll meet with every player on the team starting next week and go through you know, what they need to do to improve themselves, which obviously helps us be a, have a better football team. You made Jay and to carry on live in the spring game. Just what was the rationale for that? And what do you feel like they learned? Well, I think his first thing as a young quarterback is the hardest thing they have is the time clock. When do you get rid of the football? Because you can get into a comfort zone back there and think you have time and you don't have time. Uh, and that was something I noticed early in spring ball. They felt like they had more time than they really had. But both guys are really good athletes. Both guys can use their legs uh, to extend plays and uh, to be able to, number one, let them understand about time clock, but number two, you know, use them in the run game because if they're our quarterback, they're, they're going to be used in the run game. That's going to be part of what we do. You have two linemen from this class from the Charlotte area. Just what kind of inroads do you think you, you feel yeah. you've made recruiting? Yeah, we've been, we're doing an outstanding job. It's one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Uh, but the Charlotte area is essential to us moving forward. Uh, and I've pinpointed it from day one. We felt like we signed the two best players in the area and probably in the state is North Carolina. Uh, and Rick Sandage and, and uh, Javon Quinn, both two explosive athletes. Uh, expecting both guys to contribute for us next year. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting them on campus. So Darius Hutchinson was named a offensive yeah. player this spring. Can you just talk about his turnaround from coming from the defensive side of the ball to offensive? Well, he, since he's been with us, he's been on the offensive line. But, uh, you know, a guy that I just noticed is an athlete coming out of Tennessee, Huntington, Tennessee, uh, very good athlete, had growth potential, was probably 250 pounds on his visit, is now up over 300 pounds. Uh, but you see the growth potential within his body, uh, but then his athleticism, his feet. You watch the film, then you meet the young man, and you just, you know, all the intangible qualities you want in a football player. Uh, but, you know, he's really bought into the weight room, has bought into our nutrition program, has worked extremely hard, is very coachable. Uh, Coach Wolford's been very pleased with him and, and, uh, and how he's uh, you know, retained information and things like that. So uh, we're very pleased with uh, Sedaris and his progress. Everyone able to stay healthy the last couple of days? Yeah, yeah, we're good. And um, Mark Way, did he have to have an MRI on No, he's fine. He fine? He's, he's fine. He's going to be fine, thank goodness, because Kyle's – Man, our first two years has had the worst luck with injuries and different things that have happened. I'm happy he's finally healthy. And when I saw it in the scrimmage, it didn't look good. And, and uh, fortunately, just a little sprained MCL will require no, no surgery. And with Rico, it seems like he's been in and out for so yeah. long. Are, are there long-term feelings or long-term concern for him that he just can't get healthy? Or do you think that he'll be all right once all this rolls around? Well, you know, Rico and I had a long conversation today. And, and a lot of the soft tissue issues go back to hydration. They go back to continuing to strain the muscle all the time. And, and he and I had a very productive conversation today. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, he came uh, to campus with a growing issue. That was before he ever got to South Carolina. Uh, obviously struggled with that early on and then was very healthy and played extremely well for us his first year. And then going into last year, he had, a, you know, basically a, a broken ankle, you know, so to speak. It was a high ankle sprain, which now they do surgery on those. Uh, but, but uh, you know, the soft tissue issues are my concern. When they break a bone, that's, those are things that are, are frustrating but happen. 
Um, but when you start talking, talking in terms of soft tissue issues, and we've practically eliminated our issues from year one to year two. And a lot of it went through hydration, living the right way, getting the right amount of sleep, and straining all the time. And um, th th that's been my experience with eliminating those issues on our football team. So it was basically just a conversation you had with him about taking better care of yourself. Better care of yourself, straining all the time. I mean, you know, Rico agrees. He, you know, he, he's, he's a mature guy. He's a guy that understands that. And, you know, he practices extremely hard when he's there. He pushes himself extremely hard. So we got to continue to be there. Gotta, but the great thing for us right now is Tyson Williams and AJ Turner. We got two guys. We'll roll out there and play with anybody. I mean, so at the end of the day, we're going to play the guys in practice. In this case, it's training weight room workers. That's kind of something else. Just training hard. Do you feel like Debo's overcome that? I mean, he had the same issues, but he didn't last year. I know he no, broke didn't his last leg. Year. Yeah, yeah, he broke basically broke his ankle. But. I mean, at the end of the day, I, he didn't have any soft tissues. Issues, I'd knock on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all good? Thanks,